Australian Commandos, part three. Let's go. What we're looking for now is that guy, no matter what he happens, he's going to keep going. So later on, if we're on operations, he's going to be reliable and dependable. I'm going to be relying on him. He's going to be relying on me. We need to make sure that these guys are up to that challenge and for his own sake, that he's the person that we really want. You know, PT with the gas mask on does suck. Looking at this, the wet part, who cares? They're high crawling fine with the rifle, no big deal. But the gas mask adds a level of extra suck into the training. So it doesn't matter how tired you are and how much physical training that you've done. It doesn't matter how much you prepare yourself. All you really have to do is just keep going. Don't stop. The stakes are made higher by restricting their vision and breathing with gas masks. Gas, gas, gas! As the candidates oh push through the merciless got that. of demarcation, the hours begin to feel more like weeks. Every minute that passes demands more than the one before it. But each of them is determined. You know what the gas mask does? It just makes everything harder. Bogs up. It's got a you know leak in the side. You can't breathe that well. It's just a pain in the ass, right? So adding that just adds a layer of complexity to things. Because you're already tired and spent. I think it's a great idea. I hope the U.S. Marine Corps does more of it. We did a lot back in my day because of Desert Storm, I think, was on the horizon. They knew about because we were doing a lot of mop gear training and gas mask PT. I think it's a great idea. If you guys ever done that, put that in the comments. And not to let this last phase of selection break them. The, the variables are, are so many, you know, that they may be physically up to the challenge, but may not be able to pick up and retain uh, the knowledge required at, in the certain, at, at the uh, required amount of time. So there's, uh, there's, there's a lot more to it than just being fit. Uh, you've got to be fit and smart and fit and be able to learn when you're under fatigue. Yeah, I'm not sure you have to be smart, but you can't be a total dumbass. And you got to be able to learn under stress, right? And what you're learning is not complex stuff here, but if you can't do simple, follow simple orders, it's not going to work out too well for you. They don't want to give you a firearm and explosives in somebody else's life, right? The most important part of the training process is getting through that selection. If you uh, show us the attributes, you show us that you're uh, ready to continue on, then we will give you that shot and we will train you, build you, and develop you into a fully effective commander. To select the top tier candidate from a, an injury point of view where we know that they are not going to be injured when they get uh, given a task that's that physically demanding or from a, um, a decision making point of view they are able to make decisions under, under that sort of physical demand as well and the right decision. You know, a big deal here is where a guy has a shoulder problem. He gets it fixed. He's in the regular Australian Army. It's like, shoulder's good to go. Doc clears him. If you've got a nagging injury, these kind of things, it's going to bring it out, right? So your muscle's totally fatigued. And now all the stress on the joints, the tendons, and ligaments, that's where guys fall out. They go there and they're fine until they do this. And they may be fine in the regular commando units, but the training they're not going to make it through, whether it's a knee. But shoulders are typically one that creep up. You know, they had something, they got medically cleared, but just not going to work long term when they're going days on end. You're never getting your muscles a break. Right. Selections, it's not about breaking people. Right. It's not about humiliating them. The selection process is about finding a person with suitable attributes to become a commando. Their response will be gauged to assess their ability to follow instruction, work as a team, and complete the objective, no matter how mundane the task might seem to be. The limit that these men can endure is rapidly approaching. But with more than 24 hours remaining on demarcation, their eventual success must now be determined by the strength of their resolve and toughness. Not so much your body, it's your mind. It's your mind that gets stronger from doing all the training and that, so you realise that you don't need to, you know, worry about things and feeling, oh, I, I can't do this anymore. You know, you know you can, so you just keep, you keep doing it. The, uh, the selection... I think a lot of people miss this in general public. They think, well, it's all mental, right? Yeah, it's all mental if you come in in great shape. If you come in as a turd, I don't care how strong your mind is, your body's not getting you there. Like if my Chevette or my VW Bug wants to beat the Corvette, 
it can mentally want to do it, but it's not going to physically, right? It's designed to be uh, the toughest thing they've ever done. We are selecting for the top tier individual, the cream of the crop. Uh, it's tough, it lasts for longer than, than a normal physical training session uh, that they'd be expected to do on, in, in regular army. And it's, um, it's a lot tougher as well. And only minimal rations to sustain them. The bodies of the candidates are screaming for respite and their mind is begging for the pain to stop. Now I've seen some guys limping like that and they just keep running, keep humping. That's mental toughness, right? Now this guy truly may be hurt, but you've seen some guys you know were hurt. You know because you see them the next day and they're letting knees swollen up. They just kept pushing through. That's where you get the mental stuff in. But sometimes there's injuries you just can't overcome. Your shoulder's jacked. You can't lift your arm anymore because you went there thinking magically the shoulder was going to get better when you went to commando training or ranger training. Fill in the blank. So a lot of these guys with the ouchies, it's just that they're not want to be there, right? And that's the question. It is the mental part when you have an injury. Now, are you hurt or are you injured? Injury is not much you can do about it. If you're hurt, you should be at a tough throw because we've all had those kind of things. When this is compounded by injury, it simply becomes too much to bear. Okay, you have to motivate these guys. All you do is finish my bunker. Once you finish my bunker, that's it. We want to see who's who's got that resolve to keep going, who's got self-doubt. Some people will quit right there, then on the spot. If other people have already done it and, and people are already in the unit, then what separates them from, from me? You know, people get tired of these trainings and it's a team event. That's when people start getting bitchy, right? You get one guy who's not pulling his weight, somebody else gets hurt, everybody starts arguing. So then you see who's the leader, right? Who can pull those people together into a team because if you got five guys toting a log or an injured comrade, you can't have somebody not pulling their weight. Otherwise, someone else gets hurt because you're dealing with the weakling. Constant battle, um, not every day, it was pretty much every hour by hour. I think my... Um my feet were strapped, I had blisters everywhere and uh, every, every step of every hour hurt. The most important thing fitness wise for commandos is to be able to perform the uh, physical skill or physical um, requirement and then be able to recover um, as quickly as possible and faster than anyone else on the course. Um, there is a genetic component to this, right? You also see some people that are specimens, right? They look outstanding in the gym. They don't do well at this. I've known guys that are like absolute studs. They don't do well at this kind of just PT, long, grueling stuff. You know, maybe they're a sprinter. They're not a marathoner. If you guys seen that, put that in the comments. Those people that just are really good on the shelf, but they're not good out in use every day. In order to be able to... Um, be trained in, in a certain skill or certain commando skill uh, and that ability is is going to give that that candidate more success than everyone else. Up. You must love get ups don't you want to? Thank you, want to. The guys that are here are here because they want to be and they're all now probably questioning what they're making. None of this stuff looks like much if you just take a clip of it, but when you're already worn out, right? So you're already tired, like getting up and down like they're doing feet, seat, feet, seat. After a while, the up and down, it just wears you out, especially when you're wet. Now your boots are rubbing, your socks are sticking, the blister you got starting to get itchy. That's where this comes into play because they've, you got to remember all the stuff that led up to this. So they can't totally stress them anymore because they don't have much in the tank. So now it's just a matter of doing repetitive stuff that's like the tortoise and the hare. So now they're the tortoise just trying to get to the end of this demarcation. Motivation is, and that motivation needs to be well and truly instilled right now or else they'll fail. Incoming! Take cover! A combination of self-discipline and resolve is essential for success. Have it covered off with the rest of the equipment. Are there any questions? Let's go. So the, the Australian commando has to be uh, at his at peak fitness before he starts the commando selection course. 
especially when it's wet like that. Everything's more of a pain in the ass. Your boots are heavier. The rope's heavier. You know, running in muck, obviously, is more of a pain in the ass. So you can see these guys are totally spent trying to get to the end of this phase in the training. I don't think you can qualify the level of fitness um, required for commando selection with any civilian sport. It'd be like playing a game of football for 40 days. Only the candidates that have committed every ounce of their aptitude, strength, and ambition. Wow, they really fell out here. Standing during this late stage of DMI. So you had 24 fallout in that period. That's quite a bit. And they've been building up their, what they say, day two. So you're 50, 55 hours in. People are just like, I don't want to do this as a full-time job. You know, there's plenty of guys that could do it. And they just go, because what they're telling you is, it's only going to get worse when you're out. When you're out doing this for real. Now, is it truly going to get worse? Probably not. They get you thinking. Then you think, well, I can't do this. There'll be times it's truly worse. But it gets in your head, right? So then you're just like, hell with this. I'm out. I'm going to quit. Go back to the regular army. There must be more than just aspiration driving them on at this point. A surviving commando selection requires a commitment and a raw instinctual drive that few can maintain. Pain, exhaustion and hunger have plagued these men for almost 48 hours. Their resolve has been stretched to its absolute... So 47 hours without sleep. They've got 57 left. I have to go back to the first one. There was probably almost 200 in the beginning. But 47 hours without, without sleep is a long time. <laughs> These guys are doing good because you just get delirious. You've, you're past seeing the cartoon phase. Now it's just like you're the walking dead. Everything moves slower in your mind. If you guys ever had that where you're up for a couple days, once you get past the falling asleep part, then you're just like a zombie. You got an IQ of about 50. Limit. And their capacity for clear judgment this guy. has been severely depleted. Without rest, wow. they will not last much longer. Struggling, I'll tell you why, because your two ICs are non existent. If you're, you're standing here and you're not ready to go, it's because he's not doing his job counting the men. These the opportunity to change their muddied and sodden uniforms. The candidates are ordered back into the rain and filed into position. Tired and wet, they must now remain at attention until instructors delegate the next task. Now that's when you will fall asleep. Falling asleep at attention. I've done that before, and it was at night. I was at Camp Lejeune. I don't know what time it was. Two in the morning, something. I remember just dozing off and standing there. And kind of just one eye open. It was very easy to do after a couple of days of not sleeping. And then you hear something and you immediately start going again. You guys ever experienced that? Put that in the comments. Maybe you're a truck driver. Are you in the military? Or you're on meth. I don't know. Let me know. All right, gents. You are at ease to uh, get your gear out. Sleep in place next to your, your bags, your packs on waking when I come back. And get the you candidates have now completed day two of demarcation and are given a rest but they are unaware that they're about to start another activity. After just 40 minutes, they're rudely woken. Oh boy, pack march. Now we're gonna lose some guys on this pack march. You guarantee you that. Stop right now. How many think you're going to lose? Put that in your heads. We're at 51. Let's see. Rainy and cold. The candidates have now entered their final day of demarcation. Over the last 60 hours, they've had less than 60 minutes of sleep, but there are still more challenges ahead. A scenario not unlike those faced by the Australian commandos on operations. And now they're, they're, oh, they're sorting the white rice from the brown rice. They're absolutely buggered, and they're doing a task that they think is, is pointless. The thing is, is, that's what we want them to do, and they need to do it to the best of their ability. They just got Now that's interesting. 
picking out pieces of rice one from the other and you got a bit to do it your eyes are blurry right they're fuzzy kind of itchy because you haven't closed them <laughs> for any length of time you got to pick out these little fine pieces of rice out. That's a good idea. I've never seen this is kind of like a mental challenge because not only do you have to be mentally sharp enough to figure what's white and what's not, then you got to grab it and it's small and have the patience to move it over. And then they make you count it, but that'd be even more difficult. Let's get on see. With it. They've been told not to get the rice wet, and that's oh, not get it wet either. Damn difficult. It's not all you know, action and, you know, bullets. You know, people huh. play Call of Duty or like, and they load up and they're instantly in the mission. But, you know, to get in that situation, there's often days and days of, of boredom and, and where you still have to remain alert because, you know, anything can happen at any time. It can go from being boring to you're in contact, in like, you know, within a second. Hmm. Why do they make it so hard, right? People say that. Well, you're trying to prepare for worst case scenario. God forbid they made it super easy. Then they said, oh, your commandos, go do this mission. You're not prepared, right? If I had a child that was doing this, I'd want them to be prepared to the max amount. So they did go overseas. They've got every tool available. That's important for the person. Take aside the military. You want to be totally prepared before you're covering a convoy going on one in Afghanistan. The medics are going to come around now and assess your feet. Just let the medics do their job. Man, what we're going to go with now is a basic fitness assessment. We're going to do this to assess your fitness under fatigue. The first component of the basic fitness assessment is the push-ups. Front rank. Wow, so they're already spent 60 hours. Now let's do a PT test. I don't know the standard's going to be here, but my lord. On your guts. Surviving the selection course is all about preparation, and it's not just about how many push-ups you can do. It's about being physical in all aspects, being comfortable working within yourself, knowing mm. what your limits are, and then it, being prepared to explore and push those limits. After days of rigorous physical and psychological testing combined with sleep deprivation, the demarcation process has reached its conclusion. Over the last 72 hours, many candidates have withdrawn from the course. For the few dozen survivors... You know, I thought it went back to the beginning of the video. I'm like, they're doing a PT test. I must have went back to the beginning. Still hard to believe they're trying to PT him after 72 hours. No sleep. That's unbelievable. This is a, pretty impressed on this one. A 10-month commando reinforcement cycle awaits. So we lost 51 to 39, so... Lost another 12, right? Demarcation has finally come to an end, and with it, so too the initial phase of the journey of becoming an Australian commando. After a remorseless two weeks of individual selection, the remaining candidates will now enter a four-week tactical team training course before they are ultimately selected and moved into the commando reinforcement cycle. It is no small achievement. The reinforcement unit will only accept those demonstrating the required commitment and attributes. Those who have prepared themselves and sacrificed mind and body by demonstrating toughness, exceptional judgment and unbreakable resolve. You've worked hard for it. You know, it's not just something you stroll into, it's something you... Yeah, they're going to need about a week off to recover of light duty or something after this. Their feet swelling on their joints they won't be able to sleep normal for a day or two they'll still wake up a lot so they'll need some time to recover i'm not sure how they handle it if you guys know put that in the comments be dedicated to want to do and you know you, you work hard to get where you are and, and it doesn't stop with selection it doesn't get any easier you still are always trying to do the best you can all the time and doing that all the time it gets addictive you know it's it's that's probably the best part of it yeah. Stay tuned for part four and five. New to the channel, thanks for stopping by. For my current subscribers, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.